Hi guys, welcome to the video number 326. My name is Ajay and uh, as usual, uh, this time also I have a question and uh, it's uh, actually a wonderful question um, uh, from one of my subscribers, Mehu Balam. And uh, so uh, in this video, actually we're going to learn that how to combine the VLOOKUP count if, if error and the forms, the checkbox control we are going to use uh, from the developer tab. So we're gonna make a very beautiful summary report out of it, right? So this is the video number three to six. Welcome to the channel. If you're watching the channel for the first time, then I want to tell you that I basically try to answer your queries and also like to you know give you the information on the very basic things on Excel, Excel VBA, Access and Access VBA because I simply want Want everybody to be very pretty awesome in all these four subjects right you can go to the channel guys and uh, once you click on the playlist you will get to see here a lot of actually the 42 different playlists on Excel, Excel, VBA, Access and Access VBA, right? This video I'm going to upload here under this, the art of making dashboards because it actually is a kind of, uh, you know, the summary report, the dashboard, which we want to do. You can watch all these 12 videos also once you click on that. Uh, start, uh, we have actually the basic videos and then we part one, part two, part three, you know, so on. We have tried to st uh, start from the basic and then gradually covering the intermediate and the advanced dashboard skills, right? So this is the question I received from the uh, alum and this is the file you can see here. He has shared this file with me. Uh, so he has written me uh, uh, two days back. Hi Ajay, hope you are doing good. Uh, please read my problem. I have created some check boxes and I want to make a summary report using these. Please find the task file and so I mean I can tell you what exactly he has written. Thank you so much uh, alum for your question and uh, I know you keep on writing me emails actually also uh, keep uh, giving your comments also so it's wonderful that uh, you have so much to share with us uh, so every every you know uh, every every person who is watching this video uh, my subscribers or uh, maybe uh, people who are watching this channel for the first time the video you know they can take the benefit now I'll tell you what exactly we want to do so this is a guys uh, this is his sheet which he he has forwarded me Profile center and some names are there, so I can name them as a transaction ID. I think this is what he has actually written transaction IDs. Now, every ID is a unique basically, and the data it looks like sorted with these categories, but it doesn't matter, it can be in any direction. Uh, he has created some check boxes here. If I click here, you know, I, I can click here. So, if you don't know how to create them, I'm going to tell you, but then, uh, first of all, I want to tell you what exactly we want to do here. Now, uh, if I click on the FS, FSI, then I, I want here with the serial numbers, all the transaction IDs should come here, auto-populate here for the FSI, FSI. And if I click on the CKG, then I should be able to get the serial number with the CKG category. So basically, I'm targeting these ones for the CKG, right? I'm going to work on that one, and for the rest, you can work because they work on the same way. The first thing which I want to tell you is that how to create this checkbox. Okay, now this is not a user form. This is not an Excel use a uh, VBA user form if, if you which you can create by going to the visual basic guys First of all, I want to clear that right. It is a uh, normal uh, The checkbox is a user uh, form which you can create from the developer tab when you go to the developer tab and insert here And this is one this is the one you can create if you don't see the developer tab You need to go to the file and the option and if you're using Excel 2010 and the onward versions You can find here in the custom ribbon click here and press ok and that developer tab would come if you're using the Excel 2007 only then somewhere here on the top you get to see here when you click here I don't remember the option, but when you when you on the top three I think one of that uh, the left side, you know these tabs when you click here you get to see here uh, show the developer tool developer tab you just need to check mark that and click ok and the developer tab would come this is very much required right that's why i'm telling you now we create the uh, checkbox so if, if i create the checkbox for example here like this you see the checkbox is created right now i can uh, once i click here the cursor will start blinking inside it and i can you know write whatever i want to write so you can write here whatever you want to write so in this way all the these four checkboxes are created and uh, these are called the form controls, not the ActiveX control, because when you click on the insert, you have the form control and the ActiveX control. Both look like same, but they're functioning a little bit, you know, differs from each other. So right now I have used the form control, ensure that. So once you have that, now what we want to do, the first, I want to give the idea. So guys, basically what we would like to do here is uh, over here, because FSA, you know, uh, I'm going to use the VLOOKUP, but to use the VLOOKUP, I have to make this FSI unique and same for the CKG and HLS because VLOOKUP doesn't work on the repetition. So here I'm going to use a function called COUNTIF. I'm going to count everything here. I've talked about this COUNTIF also in my the playlist called uh, 
uh, Excel VB, uh, Excel count and some family go go ahead and watch that if you're a beginner You will be able to understand the count if the function from the very beginning So this is the range I'm going to give as I said, this is the advanced level of the videos I'm really not going to explain these things the county function, but I'm uh, I would rather you know focus on the technique So in this range what we want to count is the criteria uh, you know this uh, which is called the b2 so you will get the count of you know fsa and if i if i just show you if you count these fsa they're going to come as you know you can see here on the taskbar they're coming as 12. now the point is um generally people like to freeze this everything this is what you know they have learned actually in excel that just freeze this and drag it right but the point is when you drag this you will get the 11 everywhere and this is not going to make your fsa unique because your table is actually freezed if i show you the table starts from here on the top right so in order to make it unique what we need to do is uh, i'm going to delete this okay i'm going to delete this and um uh, not i mean I, i'm going to delete this uh, the data and i come back here and please leave your b2 open so that the next time it should be b3 and then b4 right whereas b33 uh, has to be uh, freezed because we don't want to change the range now this this would do what this would do the magic if you drag it down What will happen you will get the series here 11 10 9 8 7 6 and not only this if you just like to change this You know, let's say ckg and you're gonna write here ckg as I was telling you This is not gonna impact because here you have the 9 and then 8 and then 7 and for the next FSI you have the 6 So this works so wonderful, right? So automatically everything, uh, you know keep on happening uh, so now, if you still don't get me, what I'm doing is uh, look at this. This is your table and here the table actually moved here. So the upper cell, which is already counted in the above cell, we are simply skipping that. So that's actually the trick. Now, if I drag this down, you know, uh, everything uh, will come for we will have all the unique counts and we need to now merge it. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to actually merge uh, the value, which is, you know, the value which is here. So what we will do, uh, we will simply write here. Uh, equals to uh, this cell and concatenate it with this formula so you will have your fsi 11 and then when you drag it this is how guys you will get the count right you can see here i have got all the unique counts now the vlookup can work very easily with this right but to do that because vlookup needs this column to be used we are going to give this range in the vlookup i'm going to actually write here fsi fsi so once i have created here fsi you know i'm going to write here uh, a numbering i'm going to write here one two and three but i'm going to automate this so to automate this i'm going to write the row number of a1 this is a row function in excel if i enter it returns the row number of a1 which is going to be one so this is this way i can automate this the moment i drag this down row a1 will change to a2 a3 a4 a5 you know and i will get the row number for every cell so in this way you can keep your maximum range uh, so i i don't think so we we're gonna have more than 20 so i'm just keeping it 20 right now the point is uh, i'm going to combine this fsi with this so that i can have the same you know lookup value getting created here so i'm going to use this with this and operator and there we go now you have here fsi one obviously you need to freeze the d1 because i want to drag it down so i got the hair d1 fsi1 and this is how you know it would look like so i am right now i'm going to delete my formula because i think uh, i was you know doing a little research on this so the formulas were left open so this is how it looks like okay now the point is um, you can further go ahead and automate this now this fsa is coming over here but the point is this should not come here if the f, you know if i'm not going to check mark that right right now it is unchecked as you can see but still i'm getting this value so guys what we can do you can assign a macro that when this check mark you know when this checkbox is going to be check marked you should see here fsi otherwise you should not see that so go to the right click and go to the assign macro right click and assign macro and it is going to give you you know a macro name which is checkbox 7 underscore click which means that when this checkbox 7 is going to be clicked what you want to do checkbox 7 is uh, getting created because i think this is a checkbox number 7 so the moment you keep on creating uh, creating the new checkboxes these numbers keep getting incremented right so that's not the problem just go to the new there we will write checkbox 7 dot click let me just remove this checkbox 3 so whenever this checkbox is going to be clicked um, what i want to do is I want to go to the on the sheet uh, the same sheet and i want to over here in the d4 i want to print here a value which is d uh, I, I write here d1 sorry it's a d1 actually d d1 value it should equals to um it should come here fsi okay but not like this because this doesn't talk about that what if the checkbox is not checked so i'm going to write here a condition that is if my this checkbox which is checkbox 7 dot 
Now, if, if this checkbox 7 actually um, is uh, going to have some value, uh, sorry, dot click actually, dot, uh, that now you're going to write here. Uh, so if it is actually check marked, so if the value of this check mark, if, if, if the value over here is going to be equals to true, then it should do what? It should print the value in the D1 as FSI, right? Now you see that uh, basically I'm just trying to give you the, uh, you know, uh, I'm giving the idea. This is not actually VBS in text, but I'm trying to tell you that this should happen in this way, right? So what we need to do is uh, in order to, uh, you know, uh, make this kind of a stuff, right? In order to relate with this, uh, with the D1, this checkbox click, what you can do is uh, you need to further do one more thing, which is uh, right click and go to the form controls. In the form controls, guys, you have here control, which says that the moment uh, it is going to be checked, then you should link it with the cell called, let's say I want to link it with the E1, right? So now what will happen when I click OK here, you see that the moment I check mark this, it the true would come here automatically. The moment I uncheck that, this is going to come as false, right? Let me for the time being just remove this line because it's creating a problem. So eventually now I will link actually the range A E1. So I'm saying that if my E1 is going to be equal to, if it is going to be equal to true, then what should happen? Then the D1 value should be FSI. And if it is not the case, then what should happen? Then your the value in the range D1, it should be equal to, it should be equal to space. There should be no value. Right, so when you run this, see this is what will happen. Block if I'm sorry, I forgot to put the end if else this end if. Let's run this code and there we go. You can see here I got the false because I got the false here, there will be nothing over here, and you have your series called one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the moment I click back here, you see that all right, so we have a mistake here. Uh let me check. I think it's a typo mistake. I'm so sorry. It <laughs> has to be value uh, let me just run it again and uh, the code will run so you will have your fsi again if i uncheck that you see that this is going to be off right so you can definitely go ahead and give it a white font so that the user should not be able to see it you can quickly go there and you can give it a white font right i'm not going to give that because i'm just trying to give you understanding so this is how guys the code is going to work now what is the next thing the next thing is quite simple um, first of all let me just increase a little bit this height yeah so here we will use the VLOOKUP and what I'm going to do is I'm going to look up the value which value this value should be looked up where in this table and I should be able to capture the third so it's a normal VLOOKUP I'm going to use it here right and you have your value now if the value is an error and it makes a sense because one is not here right because you haven't checked it the moment I click here you know you get to see here that the transaction ID but if it is not then what to do then obviously you would like to create here if error you can use the if error and uh, you can see that uh, that uh, they should give me the space. So let's just start the bracket here. Yeah, there we go. Now I can drag this formula. Let me drag the formula. There we go. So you have the list here completed. The moment I run this, you see that you get to see the items. Now this information, I don't need that. Obviously, uh, again, you can do one thing. Uh, you can actually, you know, uh, hide it. And uh, also for the reason that uh, you can also do one thing the moment I uncheck that, you know, this shouldn't be looking as one, two, three. So maybe we can put the if condition. Now that's all up to you guys. I can see that if the field over here is blank, then it should also return blank. Otherwise the serial number. Okay. So, oh, okay. So I think there's some problem. Um, D1 and the row E1. So we're going to write if the value over here is equals to space then i should get the space otherwise this uh there's a, some uh, cir uh, circular reference which is getting created oh uh, yeah i got the point basically i'm using this cell i'm uh, my apologies guys circular reference is coming because in this cell this cell is being used right i can show you let me just put it in the left alignment so we're using this cell and then again uh, in this cell, <laughs> you can't use the same cell you know because this cell is already a part of this it, it's actually taking the value from here so that's why it's uh, doing this kind of a stuff, but uh, maybe we can do one thing. Uh, we can put the if condition over here that if this value is going to be blank, you know, if it is blank, then give it the give, give us the blank. Otherwise, take the series. So in this way, I think it looks pretty fine. Then just drag it. There we go. So now when I click here, you see that you get to see the value. When I don't, you don't get to see the value, right? And um, um, of course, I have some issue over here. Uh, I want to check. Uh, well, basically D1 should be actually freezed and because of that reason, 
your answer is not coming correct because d1 if d1 is, is is equals to blank then it should be blank so down the line also we want to make ensure that it should be compared with the d1 right now it's getting compared with the d4 because of the dollar sign right so it's a basic referencing problem actually we have got in here now the moment i uncheck that yeah perfect there we go guys right so i'm gonna hide this row or maybe i'm gonna make this white font so that my user should not be able to see that so in this way you can create the series this is what it is you know it looks like this is this is how it is going to work and if you want the serial numbers maybe um i can say that you can go ahead and create one column you know uh, you can you can create the column over here and you can write the serial number that uh, if this value is not empty then you should be able to see here the row number the row of a1 which is going to be always one so in that way also i mean you can write the function so uh, this is this is how you can drag it you can see that um, and the moment i uncheck that you know that's how it, it is going to look like but anyways uh that's something else i really don't want to uh, you know do that kind of a stuff uh, let me just uh, remove this portion i was just giving the example i mean you can connect a lot of things and uh, with your lot of things i mean uh, you can decorate the summary report uh, according to your requirement i was just giving the example serial number one two three can also be created as such there will be no problem with that right and uh, by the way uh, if i uh, look at this 11 12 and something sort of all that stuff since you are going to just give them the white font so they are also not going to create any problem so there are n number of ways i'm trying to explore all the options over here now now same thing you can do with the ckg you can link that with these two cells so once the user clicks here you should be able to see the ckg list as well right so the good part is that you learn the vlookup and the count if how to combine them how to make a use of it and of course this was a beautiful one uh, where we actually went to the format control and you know we used the cell linked for the checked value i said that you know if ever this checkbox is going to be checked in the e1 i need the value what value well by default it is going to give you the true or the false you don't have to worry about that right that's why when you check mark that you get to see here a true value so in this way guys you can also use these um, you know the controls the form controls we hardly used any programming i mean there was just a simple program which we have made if i take you to the assigned macro uh, if i just go ahead and click on the edit so this is uh, just uh, i mean four liner of the macro which we have written right and today in today's time everybody is learning the vba and um, so i think this is the very basic code what i've done i have simply said that if the e1 is going to hold true that means that uh, the control is checked and if it is checked then you should write here fsi otherwise you should simply write here that uh, the blank okay so this is a very important line of course and then uh, of course the format control assign macro format control we have combined them beautifully right so this is how um, you can create this thank you so much alam for sharing this wonderful example and uh, i think this is a one of the best case studies also we have uh, got got in here on our youtube channel and i'm sure uh, all my uh, lovely people out there lovely subscribers uh, who are watching the, this video they they can definitely say i mean they can they will be able to utilize this in their own ways right because you got to understand the technology not really i mean how the dashboards are being made everybody has its own way of making the things you have your own data but you should understand the technology so with that said guys please subscribe to the channel and uh, as usual i will be back again um, taking your questions and telling you more about the excel excel vba access access vba thank you so much and have a wonderful day